So the thing that I'm drawn to most initially about the Ford Bronco is the look. It looks super retro and it, it's got a lot of the styling elements of an original Bronco that was invented, that was birthed, that was born in 1966. Hey, hey everybody, Brock Frady here, helping you enjoy your ride. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this super cool 2022 Ford Bronco Outer Banks Edition. This one has aftermarket wheels and tires on it, so we're not gonna really talk too much about that, but for the look of this thing, man, it looks absolutely awesome. We're gonna go over the inside, we're gonna go over the outside, we're gonna talk about all the cool features, the buttons, the gadgets, safety features, and everything, including that cool convertible top. That thing is so simple. Before we begin, I would like to say a huge thank you to Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina, for the opportunity to film this beautiful Bronco. I'll be sure to leave all of Impex Auto Sales contact information, including their website, in the description box below. This is your key fob. You can see on the top of the key fob is your lock button or unlock button. Uh, below that is lock. Here uh, you can hit it twice for remote start and then down here below that is going to be your panic alarm. There is also a removable key shank. There's a button right here so you can push that in, remove this key shank and this is going to be to unlock the door in the event that the battery in the key fob dies. But for the most part, you're just gonna keep this on your person all the time and never have to take it out of your pocket and you can use the vehicle completely. So right now, we're gonna try to use the remote start by pressing this twice. You have to make sure that the uh, doors are locked. Press it twice, there it is. Man, that is just so simple. You can also see that there is a little dimple right there and that is to lock the doors, see that? And that's only on the front doors. There's not one on the back. There is one over on the passenger side, but that is to lock the doors. Now, whenever you approach the Bronco, you can just touch the door handle and the engine is going to remain on so that whenever I get into it, if it's hot outside right now, the air is blowing cold. That's nice. If it's cold outside, then the heat is going to be on. Um, I recommend using remote start in the summertime just as much as you do in the winter because it makes it climate controlled whenever you get inside your Bronco, no matter what, if it's hot or cold outside. Now, to get in and to start it, you still have to press the start button. You can see right there it says the, to drive, press the start button. So you're going to get in, put your foot on the brake, press the start button, and then you'll be good to go. The engine does not cut off like some remote starts do, and I like that. And you also have um, a little cool little thing because this one has the, the removable top. You can see how the window goes down. It goes down a little bit, and watch whenever I close the door. Whoop, goes right back up. Speaking of the top, let's take a look at how that works because that is super handy dandy. Before I show you about removing the top and making it a convertible, essentially, I want to show you a few things about the top itself. One of the things that I really like about it is that it's actually pretty quiet sitting inside of it when you're driving around. You don't really think that much about it being a removable top, being a canvas type of material. It's pretty solid. It doesn't make a bunch of creaking noise or anything like that. It's just, it's just there. You don't even really think about it. Uh, but one of the Easter eggs that I just found, there you have pictures of mountains and then you have coordinates. Take a look at those coordinates and then go on the internet and plug that in and see where those coordinates take you. Another thing about the inside is that you, you're really, this actually kind of surprised me honestly, is that you've got side curtain airbags on a vehicle that has removable doors. So you've got an airbag there and you've got an airbag in the back. That's, that's actually really cool. So you've got a big curtain at the airbag in the event of uh, side impact and I imagine rollover as well. Not 100% sure about that. So here is a big old lever. You can see this. This is so simple and I love it. Pull that down and then on the other side, pull this down. You can do this totally by yourself. And then I have been just taking this. This is like a carbon fiber material right here. This is kind of nice. But then I've been taking it and just kind of lifting it and making sure that it's disengaged fully. So you can see all I'm doing is pulling this up. And then look, boom. Now the occupants in the back, totally open. Occupants in the front, totally open. And we have a convertible top. 
you do not want to ride on trails like this because it's going to be flapping in the wind however you can see that there's velcro right here 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 Ford gives you actually uh, straps velcro straps to take this and to wrap those around the frame uh, in the event that you want to just ride like this but on the trail you can do that uh, you don't want to do it around this weather stripping you see this weather stripping you actually want to run the straps um, not through the not on top of this on a regular basis because that could actually malform or, or I don't know if that's the right word but mess up the, the weather stripping there so this is what it looks like as a convertible you're just riding around having a good time now let's say you want to go completely topless I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video number one I'm by myself and number two I've never done it before so I would probably mess things up however I am going to show you a couple of things about the back about the back seats that are really really cool so this is your back handle you can see there is a button here that makes it work as part of the smart key system so you can just press that when you want to lock the back door in fact it just locked goodness you only have to actually kind of touch it you don't have to all the way push it in then I can grab this it unlocks automatically if I have the key fob on my person and then you can see how this opens now it automatically kind of opens like that and it stays in that position and that's good if you have limited room for the door to open because you can see the big tire on the side you may only have limited room in a parking lot if that's not the case if you're out in the woods on the trail and you need more room to open it you can open it up for a total of 150 degrees really really wide so that makes it nice for you to be able to access the back very easily now this thing is kind of in the way a little bit if you have bigger items you need to be able to move that up don't you sometimes you have a clip right here so you can take this and you can push that up and let's see let's make sure that yep so that's up and disengaged now there's one on the other side right here as well you're gonna want to disengage that you also have a little bar here or a little uh, mechanism here and it's just like what you would hold the support the hood with up front and then you're going to take this and i'm doing this one-handed by myself hopefully you can do it with a friend or something and then you can just bring this up and then place this mechanism here and it's going to hold that in place so now that allows the top to be that much higher and that's a significant amount that much higher to give you room to access the back easily you can see that this back seat is folded i love how the back seats fold they are super easy the material here is really really nice too nice and hefty good for off-roading and junk you can just wipe it right off but you can see here that there is a release lever on this shoulder there's also a button on the uh, headrest so you can take that push it down release here fold it down the back of this is rubberized the transition is rubberized the far back is rubberized so it's all easy to clean you also have child safety seat uh, anchors right there one two three this is through uh, three seats so there this is a five passenger Bronco uh, the one with two doors is a four passenger Bronco so if you're gonna to want to be taking five people you need the four-door configuration one of the cool things that I almost missed is you can take this you can fold it then you can pull this up fold it tiny bit of storage here but then there is a jack and there's a fuel filler thing right here in case you have to fill it up with a um, like a separate gas tank and not a pump because this has the easy fuel system so you would just take that place it in here and then you could then fill it up with a gas tank now under the hood of this one you're going to see a 2.3 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder this one is going to produce what Ford says on regular fuel is 275 horsepower at 5700 rpm 315 pound-foot of torque at 3400 rpm However, there's also a specification on the website that indicates if you use premium fuel, you're going to get 300 horsepower at 5,700 RPM, and the torque is going to get a bump up to 325. Is that worth it? I, I don't know. That's totally up to you. Apparently, you can use either regular gas or premium gas based on what you want your horsepower and torque output to be. 
using regular fuel in this one, I assume it's gonna be producing 275 horsepower. What I have found with this little engine is that this thing is going to produce all the horsepower that I could need. Now, is it gonna be worth it to go with the bigger engine with the 2.7 liter instead of the, or the V6 instead of the four cylinder? I have not driven the V6. Uh, that one does have a twin turbo. I, I imagine it's going to be a lot different <laughs> whenever you're in, in terms of acceleration and everything. For me, as far as I'm concerned, I've been driving this little uh, four-cylinder turbocharged one it's all I could need it is a hoot I absolutely love it let me give you a little tidbit on how to know which engine you have because you see a little warning here and it says based on the 2.3 liter four-cylinder or the 2.7 liter v6 that doesn't tell us which engine is in this vehicle well there's a sticker right here and it says Cleveland engine plant all of the four-cylinder turbocharged ones are made in at the Cleveland engine plant, and all of the 2.7 liter V6 ones are made at the Lima engine plant. So, there you go. That's a little tidbit. You've got your battery right here. Uh, you've got your uh, brake fluid right there, coolants, windshield washer fluid. There's a big old mouth that's gonna be for breath, so you can have more forced air into your turbocharger. Also something that you'll notice, you'll see how this is all kind of like, there's there's patterns right here under this hood. And that's the, part of this pattern right here, you can see is a mark right here. And the only reason I'm highlighting this is because the reflection off of the concrete here shows it well. But this is a uh, like a buckle right there. And there's another one that matches over here. And so it's called a crumple zone. So in the event of a severe front collision, this, the, the hood is gonna fold right there. And there are also crumple zones right here uh, for your fenders. Pretty cool stuff. But that's the engine. Uh, again, as far as I'm concerned, the horsepower and torque output on the little four cylinder one is all you could need. I love it. As I've been driving this thing around, I've noticed that there is plenty of room on the inside. And I also like the simplicity of the interior of the cabin. It's really neat. Uh, another cool thing, the, there are some soft touch materials here on the inside of the door panel. And this is like a dark, like a cobalt blue. That's a really cool combination there. Everything is very utilitarian, hard paneled, uh, tough, because that's what you need in a vehicle that has these capabilities. There's a nice rubberized handle there. It even has like insets for your fingers. It's very, very grippy. And that's perfect for this one in particular because it's got big wheels on it or big tires on it. And you're gonna need to step up on this thing. So you've got a grippy handle here. You've got another one there and it's pretty easy. Uh, you've noticed that you've got Bronco all-weather mats. Materials here on the seats are very rugged, pretty tough, but yet nice and comfy. So it's a very utilitarian inside, but it's nice and comfy as well. And it looks kind of like retro. Everything is very well put together. It makes sense. It's not stupid looking as far as gaudy. Nice Bronco emblem emblazoned right there and then you've got um, one touch automatic window controls here that's so that's for your power windows you've got a, a power outlet here power point here and a regular AC 110 volt power outlet there now as I mentioned earlier in the video the cabin of the Bronco is actually pretty nice it's utilitarian as you would expect for a Bronco a vehicle that's designed to go off-road would be However, it has its luxury touch points. It's very easy to navigate. That's the thing I love about Ford vehicles. They do not complicate their cabins with silly buttons. They, they actually combine the functions of a lot of buttons into one button and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's really easy to use especially the Apple CarPlay, the Android Auto, uh, the climate control system, everything is just really, really simple. Let's take a look at all of that right now. Starting with the panel of buttons that you see directly in front of your left knee if you're sitting in the driver position. That's gonna be your headlights. That's everything off, that's like parking lights, that's automatic, 
and this is everything on manually and the center button is your fog lights and then over here is gauge brightness so instrument cluster that's going to determine the brightness of that and when i said automatic you can see here it says a and so it can actually tell whenever your headlights need to be on bright and it will automatically put the bright lights on for you that's that's actually a pretty cool feature then you can see down here is your parking brake uh, at first I was a little bit confused by that because there was no indication that there was even a parking brake I thought at, at the very beginning when I first drove it that it would automatically engage the emergency brake for me but no that's not the case where you see that it says pull on and now the emergency brake is actually on and you know of course the gearbox is in park the stock that we're looking at right now is going to be for your windshield wipers and windshield washing function of course so you can take this and you can roll it up toward the front of the bronco and it's going to increase the intermittent washing speed right here is going to be your intermittent wipers and then your turn signals so you can just push it up without activating it or engaging it and it'll blink three times and that's like a lane change thing or then you can fully engage it and click it into position and it'll it'll do that so that's pretty nice the steering wheel is nice and chunky without being overbearing you've got these little cutouts for your thumbs right here uh, and it's nice and easy to use I gotta say the horn on this thing I'm in a parking garage right now so I'll blow wigs off if I if I blow the horn but the horn on this thing is super loud it's kind of kind of funny actually on the left side of your steering wheel you're going to see functions for cruise control so you can see set and increase the speed set and decrease the speed cancel and resume and this is going to be for your cruise control right there that's actually where you set the speed um, and then you can actually increase decrease set and then th then this feature here is called lane keeping system this is a very effective system that Ford has uh, almost all vehicles out there have it nowadays but it actually keeps you inside your lane because of a camera uh, in, mounted high up in the windshield it can see lanes and that's going to keep you in your lane it's going to actually vibrate the steering wheel and nudge the steering wheel left and right depending on your drift direction then you can go here and that is for volume up and down for your audio system on the right side of the steering wheel is going to be all kinds of different functions so let's just say you're listening to you're streaming something on pandora or another audio uh, service you can forward go back tracks uh, this allows you to use the function in the screen that is in the multi information display um, near your speedometer I'll show you that uh, the OK is a selection tool so you can just press OK whenever something pops up in that multi information display back arrow then this uh, function is your main menu button for your multi information display and I'll show you that in just a second and then voice commands and Bluetooth for your phone it, this is to hang up your phone um, voice commands work really well you can actually press and hold this and if your iPhone is hooked up to the Bronco you can actually use Siri there or you can use the uh, Ford's in uh, onboard voice command system with this as well just remember to use Siri you press and hold nice little feature there so let's take a look at the multi information display now now you can see here on the left side you have your speedometer all the way up to 120 below that is your temperature gauge and then everything else is going to be digital on the steering wheel I'm gonna press that main menu icon on the it's on the right side and it's three lines and there it is main menu then I'm gonna press the up and down arrows see I'm pressing down right now and there are several different things so my view I'm gonna press OK and that says calm screen um, then I pressed OK again and then it just obviously made the entire screen those two setups with your speedometer and your tachometer right there so I'm gonna press the three lines again and then there's my view again and then trip and fuel fuel economy average speed auto start stop Then I can go back off-road so this is pretty cool so this actually gives you real time so let's just say we're going off-road right now this allows me to know my pitch and roll pitch is this roll is this back arrow again 
tire pressure, gauges, turbo boost, back arrow again, navigation. Um, I actually really like this. So you can go down, let's just go down to points of interest nearby and let's go to gas stations and look at that. These are all the gas stations that are right near me. I can also use my voice to find uh, gas stations right there. And then whenever I press OK, it's going to... Obey traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. Please proceed to the highlighted road. And so you can see there's a little navigation screen right there. It's going to show me in real time what I need to do. I also have right here on the navigation screen, the big navigation screen, it's showing me all that. Now taking a look at the center screen, I like how clean it is and I like how it, how responsive it is to uh, the physical touch. It also uh, doesn't show a ton of fingerprints as well, which is super, super nice. You can see over here on the top left, I have a home screen. And right now you can see that there is Apple CarPlay. Um, then there's a screen right here for the map and then just a general screen right here. You can go all along the bottom here and have different selections as well. So we can make the screen uh, all audio, all car play, and then I can go over here to the left and it's like a mini miniaturized version. And then you can see here I have Ford Sync. So I'm using CarPlay right now. So this is obviously, as you probably know, CarPlay is attached to my iPhone and it's showing me basically the screen of my iPhone right here and all the different things that I have on my, on my screen that are applicable to CarPlay. Or I can go Ford Sync and that takes me back to where I just was. Then I can go navigation and that turns the whole screen back to the navigation screen. I can go apps. If I have an Android, I can then press Android Auto and it does essentially the same thing as Apple CarPlay. What you're looking at now is our climate control system. Again, I cannot emphasize enough how I love the simplicity of how Ford has laid out the Bronco. It is so easy to use everything. On the left is your driver temperature. On the right is your passenger temperature. You turn to increase or decrease the temperature and the temperature pops up on the screen that we were just looking at. Right here is max defrost, uh, direct fan direction, automatic so I can press auto and it will automatically set the temperature of the cabin to the temperature that I have set right here. Max AC for when it's super hot uh, and then you have heated seats, three-way, three-level heated seats, rear defrost, manually adjusting the fan speed, AC and then passenger heated seat front. Then here are a few audio controls right here. And this is interesting because this is the automatic restart feature. And so whenever you come to a complete stop, the engine will shut off. And then when you let your foot off the brake, the engine cuts back on and you can press the gas and go. Tuning right here, that's nice for your stereo system. That's just kind of an odd place to put that engine shut off in a cluster of audio buttons, but hey, it is what it is. You see right here in the very center, it says G, O, A, T, and then modes. Goes over any terrain, or goes over all types of terrain. <laughs> I've read a couple of different uh, things on the internet as to what that stand for stands for but I think goes over any terrain makes more sense to me you can see here that there is a huge dial and it's pretty pretty sizable so you have your gear shifter here uh, you have uh, sequential shifting right here so you can actually change gears uh, manually without having to have a clutch and then there's our tree right there so you have park reverse and all that so we're going to put it in reverse and there is our backup camera. So here is reverse. And now you can see an icon pops up and it looks like the vehicle and there's sensors that are always looking for something for me to run into. Then you have these red, yellow, and green areas right here. And they are also connected with the steering wheel. So you can see as I turn, that little black line right there turns and then there's other lines that turn as well. So you see that? So I'm going to aim for that parking space right there as we back up. 
and right now our side or our rear cross traffic alert is working if there were cars coming from the left or right it would be beeping so now all I have to do is line up those lines left and right with the lines on the parking lot it senses that wall back there so now I'm done put it in park and that's how the rear camera works with the rear assist and everything there's neutral there's drive and then there's manual so at I can, when I'm driving I'm right here in drive mode that's drive you can see that matches right here so at any speed though I can take it and I can pull it back into manual and then use plus and minus to change gears right there and so you can see it says M1 M2 and it's not gonna let me go higher than that because I'm sitting still but that's manual modes now back in drive let's look at goat modes right here and I love the display of what this looks like I can just take this and I can turn this you see that so that this is turned all the way to the left and you can see it says normal so that's normal and look at the graphics of that isn't that great eco sport I love the sport one it looks like scorched earth and then there is slippery and then it automatically shifts into four-wheel drive whenever I go from up from sport to slippery so it's in four-wheel drive four high right now and then there is mud and ruts staying in four-wheel drive and then there's sand still in four-wheel drive high and then you can see that it takes you to your um, indicator to let you know your your pitch and your roll right there automatically in sand and then it shows you your power distribution for your four-wheel drive situation right there okay everybody that's going to do it for our look at the 2022 ford bronco thank you so much for taking a look at this bronco with me i hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as i enjoyed bringing it to you inside and out I would like to say a huge thank you to Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this 2022 Ford Bronco. I'll be sure to leave all of their contact information, including their website, in the description box below. Thanks for watching, everybody. And remember, the most important thing of all, have a wonderful day, everybody.